Do you need to go and walk around? No, I don't know. I don't chance. Does that work for you guys? Are you asking too? Yeah. Should we just stay at yeah, our... Yeah, oh, it'll, it'll be quicker too if it's low. Just stay where you are. Because okay. everyone gets two minutes for the remarks. Yeah. The remarks and then it's closed in 60 seconds. Okay. And everybody gets... The, uh, yeah. Are your mics working okay? Oh, they are. Yep, they can. But Do we know that the mics are all working? Oh, uh, I know this one is. I pressed that... Uh, yeah. I can't. I can't close test, test, test. Yep. I can remember how Jeff, to do Jeff, it. Jeff, Mind the where's the No. Hello? Stephanie? Can you hear it? You're still yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It seemed like yeah. it's a mile away, but oh, here it is. My... I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? Sorry. I have an yeah, yeah it looks like they do. It's good to see Nobody's there. Testing. How's the sound, everyone? Okay. okay? We have a few people coming in. So, yeah, I'm just going to say hello. I have a little video. And I'll show okay. you the video. And I'll be like 30 seconds. Okay. Well, I know the one next one. You have to see the no, we we just did that. We initiated the timekeeper and everything. So okay. we just we you had those already. Okay. 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 Yeah. Should we start? You want to you want to see if there's more people coming in or? We've got a few people out there. I don't know whether to lean in or what. Do I lean in? Hello. All right. We're just waiting. A few people are arriving. Want to give them a chance to get in and sit down. Okay. We good? Where's Jean? Where'd she go? You want to go back here? Huh? Are we ready? We are. Okay. To get seated. Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you here in person at uh, Mason Square for this very special candidate forum. Is I believe is this the first of such events this uh, season? No, okay, I'm behind, but um, <laughs> it's the first one at Mason Square. Yes. So you know, someone once said I read that uh, there is no higher calling in terms of a career than public service, which is a chance to make a difference in people's lives and improve the world. And I want to applaud each candidate on this stage for taking the leap and running for office to make a difference. So thank you all for what you're doing. And uh, welcome to Mason Square. Uh, if you did a little yoga on the way in, you may have noticed we are uh, making things a little different here. It's fitting to hold events like this and others at this campus. This is a graduate level campus in business law, policy, and government, and conflict resolution, as well as arts, arts management. And you may have, as I said, noticed that we're expanding a bit here. We have this beautiful new building. We've activated the plaza outside. There's something going on all the time, and everyone is welcome to come and enjoy. Just grab a cup of coffee, sit out there, play some games, or read Arlington Magazine. <laughs> so, uh, the building next door is called Fuse. It is a public-private partnership. I just wanted to share that with you this evening. And uh, we, it's going to be the tech sector and George Mason University. We are bringing our College of, uh, of Engineering and Computer Science here, our Institute for Digital Innovation. It will be a very, very cool setting. And we hope a lot of neat synergy going on between the private tech sector who we'll occupy some of the building and our ac faculty, academics, uh, researchers, and students and staff. Um, so I hope you'll come back again and maybe we'll be having another candidates night over in Fuse. 
So I want to give you a quick 60 second look at what it's going to be like. My favorite part is the rooftop terrace. So make sure I can do this. All right. Da da. Da da. Here we are, Mason Square. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna escape. I'm gonna escape. Uh oh, how do I get back to uh, your slides? Uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh, technical help. Let's see. What do I you... just have to go back to. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we are. All right. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> is that is that someone right? I'm sorry. I can put it full screen. No, that's okay. I'm fine. I think this is Good. fine. Okay. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, George Mason University. The Arlington Committee of 100 is honored to partner with you on this important program to quiz the candidates for Arlington County Board's open seat. Bathrooms are around the corner to the left. They're, hard, they're very easy to find. Let me recognize, there are no elected officials here tonight, so I don't have to do that. This year, 2024, is the 70th anniversary of the Arlington Committee of 100, or we call it C100. We, that's 70 years of providing a neutral forum for timely information from all sides on important issues affecting Arlington County to be, to be heard. And we may remain committed to that mission today. Four years ago, COVID knocked nonprofits like C100, the business world and every individual to the ground. I'm proud that C100 was able to pivot seamlessly to a virtual platform without missing a program, but our membership model was no longer. Before COVID, and those in the room that remember before COVID, our monthly in-person social networking over dinner and drinks as, at Marymount University was almost as important to our members as the actual programs. Over the past two years, we emerged slowly from COVID, first with only Zoom, then adding on, uh, uh, on scaled back in-person programs for a modest fee. We rely primarily on donations for our ongoing expenses. Our growing list of Zoom during viewers during COVID and those who ventured out for the in-person once, once indicated that there are many out there that are like us. Today's program is certainly a good indicator because as, as many of you that are in the room here, there is probably double online. It's a different world today though that is requiring all of us and everything to pivot to new ways of doing business. <clears throat> Many of you have already received a save the date for our June 12th event that is different from our traditional year-end programming. It will be a grand celebration of the arts graciously hosted by the Museum of Contemporary Art Arlington, or MOCA, hosted by the or MOCA, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Those who attend will be the first to view MOCA's special anniversary exhibit featuring well-known local, regional, and national artists. MOCA's gorgeous Tiffany stained glass windows will also be the backdrop along with good food and drink for very special announcements affecting C100 you won't want to miss. Tickets are limited, so don't let your invitations sit in your inbox for too long. Sponsorships are also available, so please let us know if you would like to join in supporting this event and help take C100 into the future. It's time now to introduce the current slate of candidates vying for the open seat on the Arlington County Board. In alphabetical order, they are the independent candidate, Audrey Clement, Democratic candidate, James DeVita, Democratic candidate, Julie Farnham, Democratic candidate, Tenley Peterson, 
Democratic candidate, candidate Natalie Roy, and Democratic candidate J.D. Spain Sr. We reached out to the local Republican Party who desert, doesn't have a candidate to announce at this time. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Greg Hamilton, publisher and co-founder of Arlington Magazine, who is our moderator for tonight's panel. Most of you know Greg as a well-respected community leader, but may not all of his skill, you may not know much of his skills as master of ceremony and panel moderator. We're honored to have you here, Greg. He will walk through the mechanics for both the speakers and audience participation in the Q&A session. It's all yours, Greg. I'll just leave that up here. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you for having me in this evening. Uh, it's great to see you all. It's good to be here. Um, so we're going to run through some uh, some logistics real quick. Um, first of all, candidates, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, as we've discussed, you will each have two minutes for your opening remarks and one minute for your closing remarks. Um, the order was done by draw, and the closing statements will be in the reverse. Um, questions will be posed by our live audience, um, and we've collected questions from our viewers at home. Um, audience members, please ask your questions in the form of a question. Um, and also, we ask that you focus your questions on local issues and that you avoid asking questions about national or global issues in politics. Um, we will not recognize or address those questions. And um, this is a local discussion. The candidates will have 60 seconds to answer a question and all candidates will have the opportunity to respond to every question if they choose. Uh, Committee Chair Jeannie Broyhill is the timekeeper right up front. She... Oh, we've changed it up on me. Okay, well, good thing I'm quick on my feet. Um, I'm sorry, what is his name? Richard, Richard thank you. Um, Richard will hold up a sign when you have 30 seconds left and then he will hold up a sign that says stop, which means stop. Um, we ask that you stick to your allotted time out of fairness to everybody. Uh, as the candidates wrap up their opening statements, we would like for the audience to queue up to the microphones. Um, there are two on either side and, um, and pose your questions. Uh, please note that this event is being recorded. And with that, we are starting off with an opening statement from J.D. Spain. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone in attendance. It is a pleasure to be with you one more time. My name is Julius D. J.D. Spain, Sr. I am the Democratic candidate for Arlington County Board. I'm honored to have this opportunity to introduce myself to you. I'm a dedicated, deliberate, decisive Democrat, and I have a for I'm a former veteran of the United States Marine Corps of 26 years. I have a track record where I served on Capitol Hill on a diplomatic assignment to NATO as an Arlington County appointed a commissioner, a member of two county working groups, and a civil rights leader. I possess a unique skill set that I believes makes me the best candidate for Arlington County Board. I am an inclusive community leader, and I want to focus on promoting a strong public education system, getting our economic security and innovative outlook under control, civil rights and liberties, protect those, environmental sustainability, public health and safety, and I believe in investing in people and supporting our schools first and foremost and our youth, because that is our, our future. Our teachers are clearly important to me, and I also believe that we need to have a strong tax base here for attainable housing. I am a proven Democrat. I know how to get things done, and I share progressive values. I'm committed to listening, unifying, and collaborating with all stakeholders, not just certain groups of individuals. As I look out in the room today, I'm thinking right now about the 46 odd percent of Arlington that are minorities and many aren't here today. And that troubles me. So with that being said, you need to bring someone to the table who is a, definitely an inclusive leader because in Arlington, we need to bring everyone together. Our community and my friends is at a very pivotal point. In history, on the backside, on the early side of, of a presidential election, Arlington is not immune from all the societal ills. You need a leader who's gonna stand up, who's gonna work in peace and harmony, and who's going to be innovative in outlook and push Arlington to the future. I'm that candidate. Thank you. Okay. All right. 
My name is uh, James DeVita. Um, I want to thank the Committee of 100, and I want to thank uh, George Mason University for giving me this opportunity. I want to devote my opening to one issue, and the one issue I want to devote it to is the missing middle. Uh, my opposition to the missing middle is a central issue in my campaign. The missing middle was promoted as a way of increasing diversity and providing affordable housing. I don't think it's going to achieve either objective, and these are the reasons why. Number one, the missing middle simply won't work. Uh, the reason that the missing middle won't work is that the, the county board didn't cap the prices that real estate developers can charge for these new units. And as I've been going around Arlington, I've made note of the prices for some of these duplexes they're putting up. In Yorktown, there's a duplex going uh, with, with units going for 1.4 million. The, in, in, in Lexington Precinct, there's a duplex going up with prices of 1.5 million a piece. And just today, people told me when I was in the uh, Woodlawn District that there's a duplex going up with prices of $1.7 million. The problem is real estate developers don't care about affordable. And if you leave it up to the market, you leave it up to real estate developers, we're not going to get affordable housing. And I believe in affordable housing. Um, I think that there are much better solutions to the problem. Uh, with the price of land alone in Arlington being like close to a million dollars, I think that what you're probably going to have to do is subsidize these, these units. And there's a good example in Crystal City. It's called Crystal House. Amazon put $40 million into that building. You can now buy a condo there for $65,000, which I think is affordable. We have a lot of vacant office buildings. I think those can be converted to affordable housing. And uh, I also require developers from putting up units in the uh, Boston corridor to set aside units for lower and middle income people and then cap the prices. And if you cap the prices, you'll actually get affordable housing. If you leave it up to the market, it's just not going to work. Good evening, everybody. I am Natalie Roy. And I'm excited to be running for a seat on the Arlington County Board. Throughout my 33 years here in Arlington, I've contributed to my neighborhood, to the schools, to the business community, and to the county. I also bring decades of professional leadership experience with nonprofit organizations and working in government agencies on a wide range of issues. Last year, I stepped outside my comfort zone and ran for the Arlington County Board. It was the first time I'd run from, for any political office ever, and I came close. This year, I'm running again for exactly the same reasons and issues that compelled me to run last time that are even more prominent. We are at a crossroads. The county board is jamming development-driven density without guardrails throughout Arlington and marketing it as social justice to paint opponents in a bad light. The county board seems more focused on catering to developers and bringing in new residents than, than on the people who already live in Arlington. There is no single issue on the ballot this June. What is on the ballot? The vision for our county. That vision, as I see it, is about restoring transparency and responsiveness to the county board. It's about truly affordable housing, fiscal responsibility, supporting our schools, tree canopy, open green space, sustainable development, livable and diverse communities, public safety, historic preservation and quality of life. It is about ensuring our county services are top notch and that our highly qualified county staff are supported in delivering exemplary customer service. And it's about common, some common sense leadership. The stakes are high. I have the experience, the creativity, the energy and the drive to hit the ground running on day one. I would be grateful for your number one vote Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. I'm gonna stand so you can see me a little bit better. So uh, my name is Julie Farnham. I have two young daughters. Their names are Natalia and Lena. They are in fourth grade and third grade. They go to Oak Ridge Elementary School. And they're really the reason why I'm running for office. I'm doing it for them and for all the children who have a stake in our community's future. I also am running because I used to work for the United States Capitol Police, and I was there on January 6th, and I saw how divided we are as a country. And in a lot of ways, Arlington is divided too. We're coming off this bruising, missing middle debate, and there was a balance that could have been achieved there. And the county board showed a lack of leadership, creativity, and strategic direction. They failed to find common ground, and they failed this community. They didn't listen to you. They didn't fight for you. I will. 
More than that, I offer solutions. I'm not a one note song. I own a small business doing investigative, investigative intelligence. But before that, I worked for the federal government for nearly 30 years, uh, sorry, for nearly 20 years, including in senior executive positions. I've managed multi-million dollar budgets. I've managed hundreds of people and I've written policies. My ex expertise is keeping the community safe. No one else up here has that experience. So I'll just conclude by saying that my business does not present a conflict of interest, and I would happily recuse myself if uh, a vote came up on the county board that dealt with my line of work. I have honesty and integrity, and that's needed for this job. I'm also not beholden to developers and those who represent them. We cannot afford, literally and figuratively, to elect another establishment candidate or another person who could profit off the decisions they make on the county board. I'm the best qualified. Again, my name is Julie Farnham, and I humbly ask you that you rank Farnham first this primary. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tenley Peterson, a mother of three kids, an Arlington Public Schools mom, and a communications professional. I have more than a decade of experience on Arlington County's Planning Commission and Budget Commission, the two commissions most related to the work of a county board member I have been doing as a volunteer appointed commissioner for more than 12 years. I am ready to hit the ground running. I've chaired Arlington's Budget Commission, where I led the community review of the county's $1.5 billion annual budget. My lived experience informs my values and my values have informed my career choices. As a professional, I've made a career working for nonprofits. As a military spouse, I've worked and lived all over the world. And as a mother and a substitute teacher, I want to raise our children to be happy and healthy. Growing up, both of my parents were public servants. They taught me that public service is integral to how, do you, how you be part of your community. I'm running for Arlington County Board because I love Arlington. My family has made Arlington our home. We need to think long-term, not just about what we need in Arlington now, but what Arlington, what we will need in a generation from now. I value being responsible stewards of our taxes, getting the most for every tax dollar. I value public education because nothing is more important to our county's future than our children. And I value smart growth, it's a principle that's a bedrock of our community. Our children are counting on us to make responsible decisions today. Arlington has done a lot of great things and there's still more work that we can do. I hope that I can earn your number one vote for the Democratic primary tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to this forum. I'm Audrey Clement, the independent candidate for Arlington County Board. As a 20-year Westover resident, longtime civic activist, and past member of the Transportation Commission, I'm running for county board because it has pushed harmful policies, including excessive taxation and missing middle upzoning. Earlier this year, the county manager reported, quote, this budget is balanced, relying on anticipated revenues at the current tax rate, end quote. So why has County Board adopted a tax rate hike that will increase the average tax and fee burden by $541 or 5.1%, which is about double the average 10 year rate of inflation? The budget doesn't estimate the number of longtime residents who will be driven out of the county due to escalating taxes, nor does it explain why it's okay to put some residents out of their homes in order to provide housing for others. I also oppose the so-called missing middle ordinance that the county rammed through in 2023, despite major impacts and the fact that it will, will provide no affordable housing. Some Democratic Party candidates say they oppose missing middle, but once elected, they will surely be forced to go along with the program. The only way to stop the unaccountable Democratic Party machine is to stop reelecting it. Vote Clement for county board on November 5th. If elected, I pledge to seek immediate tax relief for residents and businesses. Convene a task force of community stakeholders to study reasonable alternatives to missing middle. If you share my agenda, then volunteer or donate to my campaign at AudreyClement.com. Help make the Arlington Way more than an empty phrase. Thank you.
So let's open it up to audience questions. Um, if you all could start queuing up to the microphones. Um, while you're doing that, I will kick it off with the first question. Um, we collected uh, questions um, from our Zoom participants. Uh, nine of them, as of yesterday, were about missing middle. Um, and I thought, I think we can simplify things a little bit, and we heard your opening remarks. But if we could just go get a show of hands, how many of you are opposed to the missing middle plan that passed last year? Is that three? Four. Four? Okay. And who is uh, on board with the vote that passed last year? Okay, two. Okay. So I thought that would just sort of help frame our audience questions. Um, and ma'am, may I turn it over to you? Yes. I'm, please, please state. Oh, thank you. I'm Catherine Scruggs, a retired Arlington public school teacher. And I want to know uh, from each of the candidates whether or not they support the adoption of a community broadband authority for the underserved so that they can have internet connectivity. James, I believe you have the opportunity to respond first, if you choose to. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. If, if that will help people communicate, I'm all for it. Uh, I think the ability to talk to each other is, is what's really important in a democracy. And if that will help, I'm certainly for it. Natalie, would you like to respond? I would. Um, I would definitely support that. I think that's critical. I think that's really important, especially for folks in our most vulnerable, vulnerable members of our community. Also for seniors who are really, I mean, struggling to stay here and and uh, stay in their homes. I think this is very, very important and I would be very wholeheartedly supported. Julie. Yes, I do support that very much so. Um, I really do think that internet service should be a utility. And I know that there are bills in Congress right now considering that very issue. Um, and so making sure that everyone, it's, it's part of our lives now, right? We need to have internet. And so uh, making sure that everyone has access to that, that helps with their learning and helps them be connected to the community. Hi, um, yes, as a substitute teacher, I definitely wanna make sure that all of our kids have access to the internet. I am less familiar with broadband authority in particular. So I'm really excited to learn more about it and happy to have conversations after this forum about it. Um, just to make sure that we are investing in the, the right solution for our kids and being good stewards of our tax dollars. But in general, yes, I very much want to make sure all of our students have access to the internet so we can close some of the disparities that we're seeing and the outcomes that we're seeing. Thank you. Uh, yes, I echo the sentiments of the other candidates. I don't know a lot about community broadband, uh, but I do know that a lot of people in our community are in need and could benefit from it. Yes, I, I agree, but we need to go a step further. The community has already invested some funds in, in hot spots across Carlington. And as I sit on the President's Innovation Council here at George Mason University, I can tell you it's not just about the youth, it's about households, right? So as we think about community broadband, which can also be a utility, we need to look at how we're providing services to residences, right? And then how, once we get it to those residences, the individuals that live there, do they have the devices to tap into the internet? It's not just one stop shop, it's a holistic approach, but I'm for it, thank you. Ma'am, would you like to be our next? Hi, I'm Janet Fedak and I live in uh, South Arlington. Um, there are issues that are specific to South Arlington. I'd like you, all of your opinions as to what they might be and what makes you qualified to address them. Natalie, I believe it's your, you're up next. Good question. And I, I agree. There are issues that are specific to different communities. Uh, I think one of the big issues that I would focus on right away for South Arlington would be parks and tree canopy. Um, it's something that I think is a problem all over the county in terms of not enough protection for our green spaces and for our trees. And I think in South Arlington specifically, there's a lot more that we could be doing there um, for protecting our tree canopy. And for an example, I am very interested in looking in and exploring some creative ways that we can do to protect our trees. For instance, tree a tree bonding type of program where 
it is, you know, not just the cost of doing business when you scrape a lot by a developer, but you're actually forced to be able that there's more controls, more restrictions on taking down those trees. And I do think that South Arlington and I think the entire county would benefit from some more aggressive tree protection programs. I am from South Arlington. I live in Arlington Ridge, so I'm very familiar with a lot of the issues in South Arlington. One being safety. Um, there's carjackings were up 300% and most of those happen in the 22202 zip code. Um, car thefts are down everywhere except for the 02 zip code. And um, there's other safety issues as well. I only have a minute to talk about them. So <laughs> um, the other issue is the schools. Oak Ridge is overcrowded. I know it's better than it was. But uh, my daughter's in a trailer. She's in third grade, and she she goes to school in a trailer. And that's not um, that's something temporary. But those trailers have been there for a very long time. And then the other issue is looking at how we're developing. I know that the county lost their lawsuit or their appeal um, today with River House, and so that's what we need to look at. We need to make sure we're being smart in how we grow and develop. Uh, thank you. So I think there's definitely a lot of conversations to be had about the difference between North Arlington and South Arlington and the um, investments that are made in the community. Um, you know, affordable housing has long been a concern in making sure we're being very intentional about uh, preserving committed affordable housing. We have a really exciting pro uh, project that we're working on right now in the Planning Commission uh, with the Barcroft committed affordable housing projects and making sure we are preserving um, those, those uh, committed affordable housing while also looking at ways to add some additional market rate funding. And by doing a public-private partnership, we've been able to do uh, make that work out. And we're, we're moving that forward on the Planning Commission with a lot of uh, very intentional community engagement. Um, I also agree that um, tree canopy and biophilia and nature in South Arlington isn't as strong as it is in uh, North Arlington. And so we need to, as a community, be very intentional about making sure we are bringing nature into South Arlington, uh, protecting our tree canopy, um, planting more, more trees in nature um, so that we can address the heat island impact. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that uh, Tenley mentioned uh, uh, the Barcroft situation. A lot of people are unaware that at the time the uh, Barcroft complex was purchased, it was assessed at $138 million dollars. It was purchased for about $425 million. Uh, so the original owners of that property uh, realized um, a huge capital gain from the sale of that property. As a result, the county, which uh, facilitated the purchase with a $150 million loan, uh, is faced with huge debt service uh, every year that will consume all of the Columbia Pike tax increment financing fund. So that means that other properties along the pike cannot be redeveloped in any um, realistic time frame. So that is a major issue for South Arlington that most people are totally unaware of. Uh, another issue that was mentioned, it, sorry. <laughs> 60 seconds is not a long time to talk about this. I live in Penrose, I've been there 15 years. Uh, the question was, what are the issues in South Arlington? I can tell you, um, Columbia Pike and our businesses. We are, as Alfonso Lopez, the delegate who has endorsed me, has said many times over, 22204 is, one, is the world in the zip code. And in that part of Arlington, I will tell you, we're losing businesses left and right. So I want to work with Arlington Economic Development, Columbia Pike Partnership, with our chamber, and I want to invest and get businesses thriving on Columbia Pike along with setting some timelines on these projects so we won't have Columbia Pike torn up for almost two years like it is right now is a headache to get from Pentagon to Seven Corners. So I appreciate that. I have, I have, cho have received, excuse me, the number one endorsement from the Sierra Club. So all of what you heard about the tree canopy and protecting tree canopy, whether you're in Ashton Heights, Lion Park, I believe wholeheartedly we need to do that. We have houses being torn down left and right in my neighborhood. No trees are going up. Mature trees are being taken down. We got to do better. That's what I would do. Thank you. I want to thank you for asking the question. I live in South Arlington, and I, I think South Arlington has been ignored for far too long. I don't see any reason in the world why Columbia Pike can't be like the Boston Quarter. I don't see why we can't have a metro. I think the, the number one issue is development. We've got to develop new businesses on the pike. We have to develop new businesses 
in new buildings, but I think that we need to do so in an environmentally friendly way. I think we need to have input into the buildings that go up, make sure that they're, they're net zero buildings and that they're environmentally friendly. And I think we also have to make sure that we try to preserve our mom and pop businesses and restaurants. Um, they give the, the, the Pike culture, they give the Pike uh, uh, life and, and, and diversity. And I think that we need to develop the Pike, but we need to do it in an intelligent way that respects the needs of the community. And that's what I would work on. I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, interject a, um, a Zoom uh, question. And that is um, Arlington has a lot of empty office space, which is leading to a revenue shortfall. What is your plan to address it? Raise taxes, cut services, or do you have a different approach? Julie, the floor is yours. Uh, I would have a different approach. I don't support raising taxes. I think we need to be we need to prioritize what we need to have and what's nice to have. But to this question, for the commercial real estate vacancy rate, we need a menu of options. Arlington is pretty good at um, recruiting larger companies, but not all the buildings that are vacant are conducive to having big, big companies. Like look at Columbia Pike, for example, there's a lot of vacant space there. And those like mom and pop shops are the what would fill those places or looking at repurposing them. I've heard a lot about an indoor pickleball court. <laughs> I've heard a lot about pickleball generally. Um, and so uh, things like that. And also some of them can be converted. The county manager says there's nine buildings in Arlington that can be converted to housing. And if we look at things like micro apartments too, then that's something that we, that would make more buildings conducive to conversion to housing. So we need a whole menu of options, but I do not support raising taxes. Um, so the office vacancy rate is something that I've been working on for a long time, both on the Budget Commission and the Planning Commission. Um, it started with when the military started leaving Arlington, and we were just starting to get the office vacancy under control, and then the pandemic hit. And now this is a problem that communities are experiencing across the country because folks want to work from home. Um, as Julie said, we need a menu of options, and um, I have been working on that menu. On the Planning Commission, we've been doing very intentional updates to our zoning codes, zoning and codes, so we can make it a lot easier for businesses to fill in some of this office space. We've updated parking requirements. We've updated the types of businesses that can fill this space. So we have been doing a lot of work in partnership with um, economic development to solve this problem. Um, there's also the option of um, office to residential conversions, which has been mentioned. There's a handful of uh, buildings that are eligible for that. So I would make, want to make sure we update our zoning and our codes to make sure that is um, done in an administrative way so we can just get it done. And then also, I think we need to keep investing in the amenities that bring businesses to Arlington. That's our public transit, that's our great schools, and that's our park system. And that's what the people come to Arlington because we have great workers, and we need to make sure we keep investing in that. So to reduce Arlington's office vacancy rate, I will encourage the board to mandate that federal agencies in the D.C. area comply with Executive Order 12072 issued by Jimmy Carter in 1978 to revitalize and strengthen the nation's central cities. The order stipulates that whenever a federal agency relocates, it must give priority to an available space located in a city central business district rather than in a suburb. Enforcement of EO 12072 would reduce Arlington's office vacancy rate, yet most federal agencies have ignored it. For example, GSA has announced plans to relocate FBI headquarters to Greenbelt, Maryland, over the objections of Virginia elected officials. Virginia might have had a better shot at a deal had Arlington or Alexandria invoked EO 12072 to get it. If elected, I'm going to insist upon it. Another way to fill vacant offices and attract and it is an attractive alternative to divisive and expensive missing middle, and that is office to residential conversions. Thank you. So, um, We've been talking about commercial vacancy rate for since I've been here, um, but we need solutions, right? And some of what you've heard is okay. Uh, if you elected to the board, what I want to do is convene a task force because it's a race to the top to really compete with industry to bring in new business to Arlington. I mentioned earlier about an innovation council I sit on, and I think we can't not be stagnated in how we think. 
where we have academia, we have schools, we have childcare, we can do a little bit of mixed mix, uh, development. We have empty buildings, we need butts and seats. And what that's gonna take is a leader to challenge Arlington Economic Development, to work regionally, and to work with our delegation so we can incentivize and perhaps some incentives to bring businesses here. Right now, there's no penalty for developments, for developers that have empty buildings. That's just a fact. So we're not getting revenue in. So I want to work hard in that regard uh, and challenge to bring in new business. That will be my task. Arlington's commercial vacancy rate is 22%. One out of every five businesses in Arlington is vacant. Here are three ideas for uh, solving that problem. Number one, offer an introductory tax rate to new businesses. Cut taxes for a couple of years to businesses who are willing to commit to Arlington long term. They're willing to come here for five years, cut their taxes for two. Um, change zoning laws. There are uh, zoning restrictions on the types of businesses that can be uh, done in certain areas. If we change the zoning laws to allow more businesses, we'll get more businesses. And the third is it would also solve the missing middle problem in some way, is to allow vacant offices to be converted to uh, affordable housing. And uh, that was that's essentially a two for you. You solve the vacancy rate, and at the same time, you provide affordable housing. So the first thing I would do is convene a high-level task force of competent experts from around the county, because I do feel this is one of the most critical issues that we're going to be facing on the fiscal level in terms of fiscal responsibility. This is why you know our taxes all just went up, most of us, for our property rate uh, tax increase. We need to really focus on this. And one of the things I would do with this task force is, number one, really look and explore what is possible to repurpose? What buildings are out there that we can repurpose for affordable housing for other purposes? And we talked about, there's a lot of things that have been mentioned here in terms of recreational purposes, agricultural purposes. There's so many things. One big need is for civic institutions. There's a lot of things that are out there that, that need space. One of the big roles as a county board member is to be an advocate and to also be a convener to work with our private sector to on private sector, you know, private public partnerships. So for an example, the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington has a need and to be in a permanent space. We should be working and doing everything we can to make sure that gem has a permanent space. Sir, you've been very patient. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Committee of 100. You're a real treasure for this community. Thank you, GMU, for what you're you're doing for us. And thank you all the candidates for running. I'm having a hard time ranking you because you're you're capable and you're dedicated and thank you so much for running. Uh, Michael Beer, uh, Maywood, uh, I'm gonna ask you about the Civic Federation's government election reform uh, uh, proposed changes, specifically with regards to uh, Arlington hitting above its weight, both in the DMV and statewide. We proposed raising the number of uh, seats to seven on the school and the county board for that purpose so you can serve on these committees better and to lengthen the chair the county chair uh and school board chairs term length so that they can be more effective so if you're going to uh, be elected what uh commissions uh committees uh, regionally and or statewide would you like to serve on uh and why and what makes you uh ready to to serve in that way Tenley, I believe it's your your turn. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, well, I believe really strongly in our um, regional transportation system, and so I would want to serve on um, a, a organization to that would uh, be intentionally working to expand public transit, to invest in our metro, to invest in our regional bus system, um, and to make sure we are, as a community, um, even looking at our bike networks and how we can make sure our bike trails um, are supportive of bringing people from um, outside of Arlington, kind of through Arlington into DC, into their, their places of work um, in Arlington or DC. Um, so that's what I would want to serve on. Thank you. Uh, actually, I share uh, Tenley's objective there. I would like to serve on NVTA or NVTC. I'm interested uh, in um, I'm interested in the safety of our bike bike trails with the advent of motorized vehicles on them and the hazards to the public. I would like to address that issue on the commission. I would also be interested in serving on the WMATA board uh, because I'm interested in preserving. Uh, the mass transit system of the of the region. And I myself do not own a car. I take 
bike and metro everywhere I go. And so I think I would be a great spokesperson <clears throat> on the WMATA board. Oh, wow, things are going fast. First one that came to mind to me was the MCOG, the Metropolitan Council of Government. Um, I think that kind of embodies everything that I've been about because they are uh, really kind of look at the, the total uh, package when it comes to regional governments. And so I think it's critically important to have someone on that board who really not only understands Arlington, but understand how we connect between Alexandria, DC, the whole package. WMATA is great. Uh, the, the transportation board are all great, but MCOG is where we talk about housing as a, as a, as a regional scope, right? And I think uh, I'll be well served, it'd be well served for me to be in that space. Thank you. I think I'd also like to deal with uh, something that deals with transportation. Uh, part of my platform is uh, encouraging uh, more electric vehicle charging stations. I also am interested in uh, more bike lanes. So I guess uh, transportation, WMATA would be something that I would be interested in. Um, I, I think that uh, we need to do what we can to make sure that Arlington is 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 uh, responsive to um, the environment. And those are things that I would be in favor of. And to, to answer your question, uh, number one, I did support those governance changes. I think it's really important. I, I do think there's so much, there's a wide range of things that county board members can get involved in. And in the beginning of the year, when you hear them taking it, um, people taking in committee assignments, you're wondering how they do that with one staff person. I think it's really important to be expanding the board. And, and on the level of, and the, the question of well, what would I be interested in? I have decades of environmental experience. I've run nonprofit groups in DC. I've uh, worked on government agencies on recycling, on pollution prevention, environment, Climate change would be a definite big area for me. Transportation would be as well, since I'm a small business owner and I, I bike very much through my business for on, uh, real estate. So yeah, I think that would be a, a good place for me to be. I'm not gonna pick transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I like transportation, but um, I would really like to be involved in public safety and preparedness. My background is with Homeland Security and with law enforcement. Um, and we have a lot of issues like drugs in our schools, drugs in our community that are not our problem alone. And I wanna see us work more cooperatively with our neighboring communities to address these issues that are concerns to all of us. I um, also care much about the Human Rights Commission. Most of my time at Homeland Security was with US Citizenship and Immigration Services. I've been to refugee camps overseas um, and I've seen that some of the human rights issues here is like the deaths in our jails that I would really like to um, have conversations with the community about. Thank you. Um, sir, over here in the blue shirt. Thanks. Uh, my name is Dave Schutz and uh, all, Audrey, Dr. Clement, this is sort of not for you, okay? But um, <laughs> the, the, the candidates for the Democratic nomination have been talking about their eagerness to get number one votes. There's a lot of strong candidates here. I don't think anybody's gonna win on number ones. Um, you know, I think you, you've gotta think about your number twos. And the question is, if, if you're up there getting, if, if number twos are transferring, from whom do you think you'll get them and why? Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good one. That's wow. a good one. That's, <laughs> so, that's an unfair. So ironically, it's Audrey's turn to uh, respond. Yeah, well, I, I certainly would like to take a crack at it. Um, <laughs> There's ranked choice voting in the general. Yes. Well, <laughs> okay. So I would say that, I mean, I have already, I will not reveal it, but I've already adduced who I think is, is going to rank high. And um, so personally, I would ask people to, because of my position on missing middle and because I believe it is the critical issue facing our county, I would simply recommend that people vote missing anti-missing middle candidates high. Well, I hope we can get out of this missing middle conversation for a little bit, but um, I'm going to take this as a public service announcement. We have 150 some thousand voters in Arlington. We need every person to go out and vote. They've earned that right. Um, and so whether you're all about housing, uh, we have candidates up here that bring unique skill sets to the table. I think you need to search hard and long about who's gonna represent all of Arlington. Um, we are one Arlington. There is a North and a South, yet people say that, but I'm trying to bring folks together, not divide us. 
I think the question as phrased is, is who do you think you're going to get the most number two votes from? And I just do not want to answer that question. Um, I got to be perfectly honest with you. I, I've talked with other people who are running here. I, I told them I'm not going to run anybody down. I'm not going to criticize anybody else. I'm running my own campaign. And if I happen to get some number two votes from somebody else, thank you. If I don't, thank you. But I'm not going to criticize anybody else. Am I next? Yes. And so as somebody who experienced um, something like this last year, um, where I came in second in number one votes and then fell to number three because I didn't have enough number twos. So I, I definitely um, understand the question. But I also think what I just heard from my co-candidate, my uh, candidate here, is that we um, are all running positive campaigns. And that's really what ranked choice voting is all about to be civil, to be, and we're all looking for those number ones, but we do recognize that number twos are really important. So I think in that vein, I mean, last year it was tight. I was very close, but it was, a, uh, it was I have a very strong position on, on density. I don't think the county is going in the right direction. I've said that from the get-go. I will keep saying it. I am a, a real estate agent. I know the business and it's, it's a developer-driven uh, pro, you know, a program that is not in the best interest of the community. So that that's a very strong position, and that's last year's position as well. So I do think that your question is difficult for all of us, but we are going for our number ones. I'll answer your question, Dave. I don't skirt hard questions, and I'll answer it directly, and I don't mean it as negative. It's just reality. People who vote Natalie number one are going to vote me number two. That's just a reality. We are more likely than not. I mean, there'll be some variation, but more likely than not, because we are the anti-missing middle candidates. And people know Natalie well, and a lot of people are going to rank her number one, and they're okay to do that. And people who rank her number one very well may rank me number two. So that's just, I think, an honest answer. I am hoping to earn all of my fellow candidates number two votes. <laughs> yeah. um, I have been working on all of the issues that are important to Arlington for the last 12 years on the Budget Commission and the Planning Commission. So if we don't agree on one particular issue, it is very likely that we agree on a lot of the other issues. And so I am very happy when I see somebody who has, when I'm doing my canvassing, I am knocking on a lot of doors. When I see somebody sign in the yard that's one of my fellow candidates, I will go right up to that door and knock on it and say, I see you like so-and-so. Here's how so-and-so and I have similar values and policies, and I would love to be your number two vote. And a lot of times people say, wow, that's fantastic. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, and sometimes people say, well, I disagree with you on this particular issue, and I'll say, that's fine. There are so many other areas that are important to Arlington, and I can tell you all of the all of the things that I've done that you would like that I would be doing for those areas too. So for me, I think um, there's potential for me to get all of my colleagues uh, and fellow candidates number two votes. Yay, ranked choice voting. <laughs> okay, uh, sir. So I'd like to talk a little bit about electric vehicles. Um, are they going to become incredible? Could you state your name, please? Is the mic on? Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to talk about electric vehicles. They can become increasingly important over the next 10 years. And the DMV area actually ranks very high in the concentration of electric vehicles. One of the things that's stopping people from buying electric vehicles is how hard it can be to charge. That uh, I have a, a charger in the garage of our basement. Once or twice a week, I pull at the charging spot, and in the morning, I'm done. That's a lot easier than having to run over to seven corners to Target to pick a high-speed charger, which would take me an hour or two. People who live in apartment houses that don't have chargers or in townhouses have a problem. Um, and so the question would be, what do you think about putting charges in, on the street parking uh, place there? New York City has started doing it mm -hmm. with some success. Now, because this is a question sort of like the Internet question, let's, let's talk about the negatives as well. Those charges cost about $5,000 a piece. They're vulnerable to people who want to destroy them. Um, and when you put a, an electric vehicle charging spot onto a parking area, you're now taking away a parking area from someone who doesn't have an electric car. And sir, would you mind stating your name for the audience? Oh, sorry. And Mary Ginsburg, I'm a retired medical scientist. And JD, you have the floor. Oh, right back to me. So thank you for the question. We are... Um, 
in Arlington County making some strides and build out of our electrical vehicle charging stations, but yet there needs to be more. So I do want to invest uh, monies where need be to uh, build out some electrical charging stations around Arlington, uh, probably at some of our community centers. I do understand the concept where some cha stations don't charge as fast. We have some older model homes, for example, even that aren't People will say they aren't outfitted right now. Uh, I think we need to look at how we can incentivize and through grant processes and working through, there's some large scale uh, grants coming out of the government that we can go after. If you don't know this, Arlington County has not uh, applied for some, some of those, the grants, which we should bring some of that federal money in to build out our electric charging station infrastructure. So I would challenge us to do that, right? I think where we can do it, let's try it, right? That's about innovation. So. No problem on my end, we just need to get the money. We need to get the will of the people, get the thumbs up, and let's go make it happen. I'm for it. I drive an electric vehicle, a Nissan Leaf. I drive it every day. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to charge in my office, and uh, there's also a supermarket nearby where I can use a high-speed charger. Be, uh, building more electric vehicle charging stations is a part of my campaign. You will see campaign signs everywhere in Arlington that say, that say create more bike lanes and create more electric charging vehicles. I would be in favor of making electric charging stations as common as gas stations. I think electric vehicles are the future, and I, I would support anything that would promote them, um, especially high-speed chargers. If anybody's thinking about an electric vehicle, let me tell you three things. There's no maintenance. You never have to get the oil changed, okay? Number two, it's not that hard. You get used to it. You, you can learn how to drive an electric vehicle, and my car gets me everywhere I need to go. Electric vehicles are the future electric charging stations. We need more of them, more of them, more of them. All right. What kind of car do you drive? Nissan Leaf. <laughs> That's right. um, I also have an EV. And uh, my um, when my, my daughter and son-in-law, who live in Arlington Heights, were investigating, looking at getting an, an electric uh, vehicle as well, they were having trouble. They were looking to see where the charges were in South Arlington. I mean, it's definitely... There's some inequities there, to say the least, and that we need to, I, I believe, put a lot more emphasis on getting EVs in uh, apartment buildings, in the supermarkets, on the street, because it's something, it's a real need. And I have found that um, that across the board, it's been difficult sometimes when you don't, you aren't charging at home to find something. So I think also the other thing that the county board can, do, can also do is, as I said earlier, county board, a member is... A an advocate is a convener. It reaches out, a person reaches out to the private sector. I think it's important to look at private sector folks who are putting in these EVs to make sure that we have enough here. So I got a car a couple years ago and I did not get an electric, electric car because I did not have the infrastructure in my home. It was too expensive to put it in and I could not be bothered to try to find a charging station. And that's, you know, that's the truth. And so I do agree that we really do need to invest in this infrastructure. A lot of apartment buildings in Arlington do have charging stations, but they're only available to the people who live in those buildings. So how I, I think one solution to offset some of the costs is working with those apartments and finding ways where the general public can use those facilities until we can start building more and having more options for people with electric vehicles, because they are the future and they're good for the environment and we should have more of them. So let's make it possible. I really value um, working on sustainable solutions. It's really important to our children that we are leaving them with a better community and a better planet um, than it's looking like we're going to at this point. Um, I have been working on some of these EV charging issues for a while as a planning commissioner. Um, when we are looking at site redevelopments, we um, incentivize developers to put in EV charging stations, but right now we're not asking them to do enough. So we need to strengthen our green building incentive program to have higher requirements for EV charging stations, as well as EV ready parking. So that's saying like, we're gonna do some of the work, uh, the work now so that parking can be put in in the future because developers will say, well, you know, it's too expensive right now. It, you you know, it'll drive up the price of the rent. We don't want to do that, but we want to say, look, if you make the investments now, then when when demand keeps increasing in the future, you'll be ready to go, and that's a better a better option for all of us. Um, we also need to look at retrofitting some of our older buildings. Um, in my building, we uh, do not have any. We do not have 
really good options for an EV park uh, EV parking. I tried to buy an electric vehicle during the pandemic and couldn't because my building wasn't uh, available. So we need to work as a community to make resources available to older buildings. Well, uh, one of the standards implemented in the green buildings incentive policy that Tenley just mentioned is 4% EV charging stations and 15% EV ready spaces uh, in, in site plan projects. So that's the requirement in the county right now. If elected, I will up the ante to 10% EV charging stations and 25% EV ready spaces in site plan projects. I think that that is actually a very modest requirement and it will not cost the county any money. And as a fiscal conservative, I am leery of asking the money, the county to invest uh, in EV charging stations. So if we can get site plans to do it, that would be so much better. But I'm also interested um, in EV parking, which would be which would uh, require county investment, I believe that uh, some investments, new investments, are good and wise, and that's one of them. We have time for one more question. Jean, do you agree? Okay. Um, and we were most recently. Oh, I've lost track of where we were. I think we can back over here. No. Oh. no? Back over here. Sorry. Sir, Hi, uh, Bill Fogarty here. Uh, interesting to end it up because you started with asking who's for or against anti-missing uh, middle, um, which is a broad question, uh, uh, very complicated. So let me make it simple because it's a, um, it's a, it can be a broad issue. Would you be willing to make the simple zoning amendment to amend the R10 district to allow for duplexes by right? Seems like a very easy uh, push for a little added density. So I'm just interested in your answers to that question. Thank you. I, I am. I oppose the missing middle. Um, just, I, I think there are several problems with the missing middle. It, it was touted as something that would create affordable housing, and if if you really look at the prices that are being charged, it's not going to create affordable housing. Um, I think that what it is basically is a boondoggle for real estate developers. Um, they, they're going to be able to put up uh, condos, whether or not it creates affordable housing. I think the other problem that you're looking at with the uh, the missing middle is just density. If you keep adding people to the to the to the uh, to the county, I, th I think the problem that you're going to end up with, you know, especially for like a six-unit condo, every time you do it, six more people, six more cars, six more kids going to the public schools, and it's like trying to pour a, a a pitcher of water into a glass that's already full. I just don't think that our streets have the capacity to absorb all this, um, and I, I I start from the proposition that density in and of itself it should not be a goal. That mindless density is just not what we should be striving for. Density is a choice. You can choose to have single family neighborhoods with trees, places where you can walk around or you can turn Arlington into a city. I like suburbs. I grew up in the suburbs. I think we ought to save the suburbs. Is it mine? Yes. Um, your question is actually about tweaking missing middle from what I can gather. You're looking at. No, I understand that. And, and I guess I would come back, back to you and say, I want something comprehensive. I, I, don't, I did not support the whole effort. And I actually agree on the density for density's sake. I want to know what our, what, what, how, the, how this all figures into the comprehensive plan. I want to know, and that, this goes for not just missing middle. It goes for the special glut changes that the county's been, you know, been doing in terms of spot zoning. I want to know how all of this figures together. What's our what's our carrying capacity in, in Arlington? What's the vision here? You know, what is it that we can actually sustain? What is a sustainable county? And I want to figure that out. And I think that we did we actually put the cart before the horse. We didn't do the impact studies that we should have done. So to answer your question, I would say we can't really we we actually can't answer that. We need to look comprehensively and we need to figure out what are our needs first. And that means impact on environment, infrastructure, schools, you name it. We need to figure that out first. Your question specifically about duplexes, correct? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily oppose duplexes. I would want to make sure that what we're building, we're building more to sell because we're mostly building now to rent. And that doesn't address our affordability and equity issues. If we want to build to make more uh, opportunities for people to buy homes. If we're only building rental properties, that doesn't help. So, you know, I think duplexes are not necessarily a bad thing. 
And I think they do fit in most neighborhoods, but I'd want to see the developers invest in the infrastructure, like the power grid and things like that, when they're building to accommodate that in increased density. And I want to make sure that it fits with the neighborhood and that we're addressing tree canopy and flooding issues, all that sorts of thing when we consider that. Because I, to me, a duplex is much different than a sixplex or a large apartment building or things like that. And so I think there is a balance there, and I'm not necessarily opposed to duplexes. Um, I think about this with the context of the housing crisis that we're seeing in Arlington, but that is also applies to the whole country. There's not enough housing and that's driving prices up higher and higher and higher. So for me, I want to focus on where we're going to get the most bang for our buck when adding density. And that's getting back to our historic success with smart growth. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to build vertical density along the public transit corridors, along the metro corridor, where people can live in walkable neighborhoods, they can be right on top of public transit. Um, and so that's just going to be so much better for the environment. We don't have to cut down trees in the suburbs. We're getting so much more housing if we build vertically. Um, I want to see more family-sized housing available um, in this vertical density. Most of what gets built that I see on the Planning Commission is studios and one-bedroom apartments. Kids deserve to live in walkable neighborhoods, too. I look forward to sending my daughter to the grocery store to buy, you know, to do the shopping for me when she's a little bit older. I will also send my son. Um, he's a little bit younger. Um, but so it's really important for communities and families to be able to live in walkable neighborhoods. So I want to get back to smart growth for more bang for our buck with housing. Uh, to achieve a compromise on upzoning, I propose to convene a task force of stakeholders, including neighborhood civic associations and local architects and economists to consider an alternative zoning scheme that was released by the Laboratory for Architecture in a 12-point plan in January of 2023. This plan would rezone the county neighborhood by neighborhood rather than wholesale using a floor area ratio approach to determine allowable density. And unlike current missing middle ordinance, affordable housing would be incentivized by awarding bonus density to developers providing such units. And I would think that since I'm going for a neighborhood by neighborhood approach, that duplexes in R10 zoned area neighborhoods would be fine. That would be one of the things that would be considered uh, in North Arlington, for example, where I, I understand most of the R10 zones are located. So yeah, that would fit right in. And, um, and again, I like the bottom up approach uh, of civic association involvement. So thank you for the question. Um, it's something, you know, R, in an R10 neighborhood, putting duplexes by right, amending current ordinance, it's something, you know, I would have to consider. But what's, you know, as I hit, listen to my colleagues here, um, Democrats, talk about housing, um, you know, I come from a place where I take things from a historical perspective. And I also look at things through an equity prism. So when we're talking about, I've achieved the American dream. I have a house in Arlington. I actually have two homes and one in Falls Church because I worked hard. And just like probably 75% of you, that's a lot of your generational wealth. But I also want my 30-year-old and my 29-year-old and my 25-year-old and now my three-year-old granddaughter to achieve that same green. I've been here 15 years and my, my house value has doubled. It's not going down, right? I don't put all the blame on developers. I put the blame on this is just a high cost of living area. But if I'm elected to that county board, what I will do is I will always fight to find to diversify our housing and make sure it's equitable across all of Arlington. I understand we want to be close to metro corridors. We want to build vertically, but Arlington is growing. It's not the same Arlington of when I moved here 15 years ago. So we're going to have to work together in unity. We got to speak with our stakeholders and make sure we, you know, take deliberate, measured, and focused approaches moving forward. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to closing statements, uh, one minute each. We're going to go in reverse order from where we started. So, Audrey, the floor is yours. Okay. The choice in this year's county board race is clear. Elect Democrats who either support the county's tax and spend agenda or will be forced to go along with it once elected. Believe the myth that a 5.1% tax hike was needed to balance the budget or accept the fact that you are being tax gouged to appease the county's favored gimme groups. It's your choice, either swallow the lie that missing middle will remedy racial wrongs or accept the fact that it will force existing minority homeowners out of their homes and make it harder for others to qualify for a mortgage. If elected to county board, I won't push wasteful 
housing programs at the expense of libraries, parks, and public safety. If you are dissatisfied with the direction of county board, now is your opportunity. Vote Clement Independent for county board on November 5, because county board needs more than a rubber stamp. Uh, thank you again to the Committee of 100 for hosting this event tonight. I'm proud to be endorsed by current and former County Board members Libby Garvey, Jay Fassett, Katie Crystal, and Christian Dorsey, uh, current and former school board members Christina Diaz-Torres and Barbara Cannon, and Sheriff Beth Arthur. Uh, the people who've endorsed me know me. It's because they've worked with me over the years and they believe in me. I'm especially proud to be endorsed by 40 commissioners and counselors who have also volunteered to serve the county and more than 20 Arlington Public Schools teachers and staff members. These are folks, our community leaders, our friends and our neighbors. They're who make Arlington, Arlington. I really want this job and I'd appreciate your number one vote. And like I said earlier, if I'm not your number one, I'm very happy to be your number two. Thank you. So at the start of this campaign, someone asked one of my staffers why he was working with me because he said I was quote unquote a joke. Aside from being super sexist, uh, I laughed at this when I heard it because this joke has published two books, including a bestseller. I worked my way up through the ranks in the federal government all the way to the top to be a senior executive. I've worked on some of the highest profile cases this country has seen in the past 10 years, January 6th, Boston Marathon bombing, San Bernardino terrorist attack. And I've started and I'm growing my own business. I've given testimony to Congress and I'm raising two wonderful daughters. Uh, I volunteer, I'm very involved in the community. I have a loving and supportive partner who's, in the, who's an army veteran and who has fought in Iraq. I'm tough, I'm smart, I'm decisive and I have a steely resolve to get things done. As I said before, no one up here is as qualified as I am and I would be honored to serve you. So thank you and please rank Farnham first. Thank you all for being here tonight. I wanna to thank the organizers of this forum. We are all fortunate to have such an engaged and active community. I wanna thank my fellow candidates. These are, I think we have maybe seven more forums to go. So it's all fun. Um, and I think it's a great way to share information and, and get the word out about what you stand for. In closing, I believe the county board needs a voice like mine advocating for transparency and responsiveness. I'm not afraid, tell it like it is, and ask the tough questions. I'm very proud that I've been endorsed by uh, county board, former county board um, chair, Walter Tejada, uh, county board member, uh, Chris Zimmerman, county board member, former county board member, uh, John Weistat, and two school board members, Abby Raphael, former uh, school board members, Abby Raphael, and James Lander, among other, other endorsees, endorse, uh, folks who've endorsed me. Um, I am committed to common sense leadership and I'm committed to transit-oriented development and to more robust public engagement. I hope to earn your number one. For more information, you can go to natalieforarlington.com. Thank you all very, very much for your time. Um, in my closing here, I'd like to just address a couple of issues that I didn't have time to discuss in my opening. Uh, the first is schools. Uh, at this point in time, I think we need to decrease class sizes. I'd also like to get our school children out of trailers. Um, this is one of the richest counties in the world. I just cannot understand why we have children in trailers. I think we need to spend more money on education. We need to devote more time to students. There is nothing more important than educating our children. Um, we'd also need to uh, fill vacancies in the police department and the sheriff's department. We have to take these measures for public safety. They, both of these departments are understaffed at this point in time. Um, in closing, um, I haven't sought any endorsements. I don't care about endorsements. The only endorsement I want is yours. I am running for the Arlington County Board. My name is James DeVita, rank DeVita number one. Thank you. Our community is at a pivotal point in history. And I will say that fear mongering and rhetoric and divisive tactics are not gonna get us anywhere. I want to invest in people. I wanna challenge us to be innovative and I'll, let you go to my website to see the long list of endorsements that I've received. But that only talks to my character. I'm the only person sitting on this stage who have been endorsed by the Education Association. That should say something. I've been endorsed by members, legislators, but I can say it's all on, the, on my website. What I think we need here in Arlington is an innovative leader. 
not a person that's going to get bogged down in one and two issue tactics. Well, you have to take the whole of community approach. You need someone who's a proven leader, one who served this country like I have. I've worn the cloth of this nation, and now I want to serve you. I've been invested in this community for 15 years. I have tangible outcomes that we can talk about. So I would encourage you to vote for me, J.D. Spain Sr., number one on ranked choice voting now or before June 18th. Thank you very much. Let's give our panelists a round of applause. Thank you very much to all of you. And I also want to thank uh, Greg Hamilton, who has now made himself the official moderator for this any upcoming C of 100 panel, and Tony Andrews and GMU for their hospitality tonight. And hope to see you on June 12th. Thank you and have a good even, evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. Okay. Thank you.